Hi everyone, I'm Chance Healy, FDU class of 94. Like many of you, I owe quite a bit to FDU. It goes without saying that I learned a lot, or at least that's my story and I'm sticking to it. I also met my wife Claudia at FDU. Claudia graduated twice, with a Bachelor of Science in 92 and an MBA in 94. And for those of you that know us, you would definitely agree that she's twice as smart as me. We have four terrific kids who, as a consequence of Claudia and I meeting there, also owe a lot to FDU. I also met Chris Johnson, class of 93 at FDU, and Chris also met his beautiful wife, Jennifer, at FDU. The reason that I mentioned Chris is that we are collaborating on a restaurant together in Marstown. Now there's a joke amongst the Healy's that I was baptized on the bar of my family's restaurant. So it goes without saying that when I got out of college, I wanted to get as far away from the restaurant business as possible. But that was a few careers ago. It turns out you can take the kid out of the restaurant, but you can't take the restaurant out of the kid. If there are any foodies watching tonight, you certainly have heard of Chef David Burke. He's earned pretty much every honor a chef can earn, including the James Beard Award, the Escoffier Award, and the Mondavi Award of Excellence. And even better, he's a Jersey guy. Chris, myself, and a few friends have teamed up with Chef Burke, and we are opening a restaurant, 1776 by David Burke in Morristown. It will feature David's signature upscale whimsical, Casual American Fare. We've also partnered with Topgolf Swing Suites, and we will be offering guests a one-of-a-kind entertainment experience. Because he knows that FDU is near and dear to our hearts, Chef Burke has kindly agreed to kick off the Charter Day Live festivities with a cooking demonstration. He will be doing a couple of fantastic takes on crab cakes. We also have with us Rachel Robbins, the chickologist, who will be mixing the signature uh, cocktail for the evening, The Devilish Night. Chef's recipes, as well as Rachel's cocktail recipe, are in the digital program that was emailed to you a few days ago. So before I turn the kitchen over to Chef Burke, I just wanted to say that both Chris and I have enjoyed many successes in our careers and in our lives, so many which can be traced to FDU. But by far, our most impressive accomplishment was marrying our wives, Claudia and Jen. All four of us are committed to making that amazing experience available to the students of today and tomorrow. I hope that you will consider making a gift tonight to support our scholarship programs. Now, I am very pleased to introduce to you Chef David Burke. Ready to go? I'm Let's ready. do it. I'm, I'm ready. <laughs> Chef? Right. We're making crab cake. What are we making today? We're crab making, cake? Well, we made a mess already, but we cleaned up. So we're right. going to make crab cake, signature dish, pretzel, crusted crab cake. The cra this is what it's supposed to look like. You get yours? All right. This is almost finished, but we're going to start from scratch. It's a raft. It's a crab raft. And we're going to add this rice pearls to it. At the end, it looks like barnacles. And this is how we serve our crab cake. Two reasons. Crab cakes usually get breaded. There's no bread in the filling, but it's only butter and mayonnaise is the binder. Um... And the pretzels, because they're crispy already, you don't have to worry about getting them crispy again. They don't yeah. absorb the oil because they're coated. So the dry bread, like a dry sponge, absorbs a lot of a dry sponge absorbs a lot of water. Dry bread crumbs absorbs a lot of oil. So you want when you bread something, you want to have the wet oil, wet bread. I mean, or moist bread, bread. Right. or crispy bread that doesn't absorb as much, right? As a crust. Okay. Sorry. First thing for crab cakes, filling, right? What do you put in filling? Sometimes you make a bechamel sauce or a cream sauce. They put eggs and breadcrumbs like, like a stuffing for a turkey. Okay. That's the wrong way to do it. Crab meat, two types. Now we have this is the jumbo lump, big pieces. This is a little bit more of the picked. All right, so we put a little bit of both. I, I'm not yet, but let's talk about this. With crab meat, I got some peppers cooked up with a little onion. The filling is most of it, the binder. The binder is butter. See this? What do we like about butter? It's delicious. Delicious. Tastes better than milk, right? Yeah. So most people make a cream sauce with milk and they use that or they use bread. This tastes better than bread. Mayonnaise, what do we like about mayo? Tastes pretty good too, right? And it has eggs in it. So now we got to take the mayo and the butter. It's important. Same temperature, right? And you make it one, right? See, you don't melt the butter, but you don't. So now it becomes one emulsified product. So it's a mayonnaise that is loaded with butter. So now it tastes even better, right? Becomes very rich. 
but there's a reason for that. Now, the, when you fry it, the mayonnaise gets hard, right. binds, but the butter gets locked in, and you have a moist product, right? So, more butter, soft butter. Mayonnaise is always soft. Here we go. You can do that. Add salt, pepper, lemon zest. You All can right. keep stirring. All right, let's do it. Here's the salt, plenty of salt, pepper. Put some pepper here. You lemon zest, that? yeah, put pinch. some pepper in there. Yeah. A little pinch. Yeah, pinch. That's right. good. And then, uh, so that's our seasoning. And then you're going to add some crab. And now the crab, from a recipe standpoint, you probably have a quarter cup of mayo, a quarter cup of olive uh, okay. uh, butter, crab meat. Just enough to bind it, right? Yep. So let's see what we got. Looks like chicken salad, right? It's great. Taste it. Tastes good. All right. Let's get in there. I'm going to add some peppers. Need more salt, pepper. Lemon's good. Delicious. Now, you don't want too much of this because you don't need this at all. But, you know, traditionally, you know, that people put peppers. I happen not to like it. But again, you know, it's a... Another flavor profile, another layer. All right, but that this this filling, chopped parsley or chives. Yep. This filling can be put on a sandwich between two pieces of bread with some cheddar cheese and make it like a patty melt. Grand Sam, or you can just simply, even though it's got a lot of butter in it, put it on a lobster roll and serve it as a crab salad. Awesome. That sounds great. Good. I mean, you wouldn't put as much butter because you got the mayo, but I, the butter, like you said, butter. <laughs> we put butter on bagels, right? Pretty good. And butter on everything. Okay, so this filling is now what this yeah. is. So we go to this part, then we have our helpers, and we make these bricks. You don't have to. <laughs> Where's my chapo? You smell the food. Anyway, pretzels next. You can open a package. Get your scissors there. I knew I kept them handy. For reason. You can open them all because the scissors work. So this is called a pretzel raft, and this is one of the dishes that every cook that works for me steals. And rightfully so, they can. If you work for me, you can steal. If you don't work for me, you can't steal. Those are the rules. <laughs> but a lot of people don't want to make it because to make 50 of these a day takes many hours. So here we go. Let's, let's lay it out. You're going to do one? Yep, let's do it. And I'm going to do one. So. Three, six, nine. About nine, eight three, or nine. Six, nine. There you go. I got eight. This is our raft, the bottom of our raft. Huckleberry Sorry. Finn will be proud. Here we go. You got to take XYZ amount. Let me get that out right? of right there. You can put yours there. All right. And you got to keep the, the logs from rolling. All right. I think you're asking a lot of me here, Chef. But, hey. Uh, let's do it. Okay, so now you got this piece, right? Now the, the beauty, what happens is once we make this this way, then you put it in a cooler and what happens? The butter gets firm. And then you can see. That's pretty good. There you go. There you go. All right. Then I'm going to put my pretzels on top. I'm making a sandwich. And this is what I do to torture my cooks. Welcome to <laughs> Chef Burke's restaurant. But see, make you know, 800 of these. See, when you make, when you're starting with a crispy product like we are, it'll soften up a little bit because of the moisture. You don't have to worry about getting it so crispy. So you don't have to fry it so long. And the other thing is, because the pretzels are coated, they don't absorb oil, and that's the key. So when you're eating a pretzel, when you're eating a crab cake, you're not tasting oil. You're tasting fresh crab. Okay. And any breaded product, for example, a chicken cutlet. If you use the driest bread, it's going to absorb the most oil. So if you just took fresh bread from the cooler and pureed it in a Robocoon, it was moist, so like white bread, right. that'll absorb less oil. It'll still get brown, still get crispy. If you only have dry bread, you can bread something and then wet it with a hair bottle, like a water. Wet it a little bit and then put it in the same fryer, a saute. It'll just, it'll still brown and get crispy. It won't absorb as much oil. So right. make any sense? Dry sponge, wet sponge method. So, crab meat there. Now, we can also do this. If you don't want to do this, you can take some of these. Do that. Take this. And just roll it. You 
Do that. A little freestyle. A little freestyle. We just charge extra for this. <laughs> and then you can just bake these. Perfect, yeah. Like a macaroon or something, right? Easier, same effect, and that's even smaller for hors d'oeuvres. But, you know, you got, you got it, uh, you still got the same taste, and you got actually less, less uh, pretzel okay. per bite, all right? Okay. So, all right, so that's that. Now we got to tie them. So show them what you, we learned today. Because <laughs> you know, what we do at the restaurant, we tie them with these green things called chives. We got to boil them. And then tie them. And so, if you think this was a pain in the neck, how about tying them now? So, so we got to tie them. All right, so we're, we're going to cheat. We here. came up with the we're going to cheat a little home bit. method, and we're okay. using a, nice two for you twisties. Now you have to remove the twisties. In a restaurant, we would be too busy to remove the twisties, and the twisties would probably be good roughage, but <laughs> it wouldn't be good for repeat business, right? <laughs> So we're going to just lightly put these around, basically just to hold the shape of Tad. Now, we also made these. You could use foil. Or you could just use string. But I can't find a string. It's in the garage. And I'm not even going to attempt to go in my garage and find string. So let's we'll see what we got. So we're making a raft. We tied it together a couple different methods. Chance, you're good at this. You're going to be working in Morristown. Be <laughs> Friday afternoon. I can't wait. It's 300 my, crab cakes. It's my specialty, so, baby. There you go. Right. Now you got to heat up some oil. I got a little pan here. All right. Chef's only as good as his tools, right? Oh, you can, no, that's not bad. Not bad. Round one, man. Round one. Next. These are called rice pearls. You want to take the, this egg white here, take a little egg white, and then you just do that. And now you got another coating. Again, rice pearls are very hard. They're hard to probably, you can get them in a uh, specialty Asian store, or you don't need them. You don't have to have them. You can use bread. But the rice pearls, again, don't, they don't absorb oil. They're crispy already. They're crispy. So now we have oil, hot, right? This is going to go right in. Whee! Don't overcrowd crowd the pan like I did. <laughs> I'm a pro. What temperature you want the oil at? I'm gonna just, I'm just kind of eyeball it. Just hot. <laughs> Flash run. Well, quick enough, you quick want it about 350. 350, okay. But, you know, like I said, it doesn't have to be that hot because we're not cooking something. It's not like a piece of meat inside that you got to cook. If you have something thick like a, a chicken cutlet or a pork chop or whatever that's breaded, it's got to go slower because you got to cook the meat. This, we just got to warm the inside. Okay. Oh, look at that gorgeous. That's yours. That one's yours. All right. Looking good. I think I'm ready for the line. Be careful what you wish for. <laughs> <laughs> See, so nice and brown. Get a paper towel laid out yeah. so we can drain it. So here's yours. All right. Oh. You can try to untie that. Is mine. Put that there. Gotta, and then we'll need to actually salt it because you always salt anything fried because you know, they're delicious. It's a beauty. And here's the, uh, the little uh, meatball. Came out nice. This is just with the rice pearls. So, but you see how nice and tender it is? Soft, right? Again, that oh, yeah. could be baked. All of these could be baked too. Okay. All right, uh, so now, the good. other part is this. I'm going to throw these shishito peppers in just to heat them up. Use them for garnish. So you untie. We're gonna make a sauce. Okay. We'll taste the filling. Hot here. Damn, it's hot. <laughs> All right, we got this. All right, oh, let's good. try this. It's good. Yeah. I think the season pretty good. Put the moisture in there, right? It's not dry. It's not gummy. Not gluey. You're pretty good at this. 
Try him. Try him. I got a good helper. All right. <laughs> Sauce. All right. Mayonnaise. Mayonnaise. Over there. A little mayo. A little, little steak sauce. A little mustard. How much you want there? Uh, how much as a hot dog can take. A little more. There you go. Ooh. So now you got a mustard and mayo with some, and it's kind of worse this year flavors, right? More parsley. Here's what they do. You put a little dollop right there. And you can put one on your plate. Right. I'll make mine, you make yours. Nice. All right. Okay, so now you can get fancy and do one of these. Or one of those. Or one of these. <laughs> then you gotta charge more. Anyway, that's that. Tastes right. good. Taste that. Let me see that. It's good. Ooh. Not bad, right? That's delicious. Well, pick a crab cake. All right. That one's yours. Well, I'll stick with mine then. Yeah. You put oh. salt on it? Did not put salt on it. We like salt in restaurants. We like fat and salt. This over here. Just let's grab it. Yep. All right. Let's do this. Lay right across. Oh, yeah. yeah, whatever you like. Look at that. It will depend on how much you can charge and how pretty it is. Right? There you go. Sometimes. You put right. any more sauce on top or just lay it right across lay the bottom? Lay it whatever you want. But this is the jam. Ah. The jam is tomato orange jam, which I put a little bit on top. You can do whatever you want with yours. You put it on a plate. Tomato <clears throat> orange? Tomato sauce. Okay. Cooked down with orange juice and orange zest. And a little bit of uh, honey and some uh, vinegar. It's called tomato marmalade, or tomato jam. Excellent. And it's great on anything you want. I got some shishitos here. But here's the other part a little bit of green. And blood orange and orange. Beautiful. I could do the same thing and it would look like a crime scene. You tell, you do it, it looks like magnificent. <laughs> I'm not that dainty, but you can... Uh... All right, let's try this. Oh, yeah, I broke that too. Hands, of, right, a, you got it. hands of a mason here. Look at this, a little green over here. Oh, not that. There we go. All right. It's a mango. I just happened to have a ripe one. I ate a whole one yesterday. So, I'm just going to give you another layer of garnish right here. All right, just see its color and a little sweetness. Beautiful. And these are shishitos. So, a little spice. There you go. Next, you, you can go. All right, baby, let's get in here. This. Across the top there. Look at that. The final touch would be a little balsamic. Balsamic. Never. And this is lemon oil. Oh, jeez. There we go. Not bad. Oh. Now don't put the sauce on the crispy pretzels. Make uh, it soggy. You went through all that work to make it crispy. Okay. It's going to be gone before you this know it. This is lemon oil. Gives it some citrus and some some, okay. some effervescence and some nasal notes. Come on. All right. That's, That's it. it. I'm done. Hands up. Just a whisper. There you go. Look at that. Not bad. This might look good on a green horse, huh? I think, I think this, that one looks a little better, i got to be honest. Yours? No, that one. Well, you know, I, no, cheat, I, way. I cheated. <laughs> no, look, they both look good. That's great. But yeah, you, you don't have the elevation. There you go. But it still looks, it tastes the same. 
Fantastic. And, uh, so this is a pretzel crust and crab cake. It's a, um, it's a uh, mustard aioli, really. It's a mustard and steak sauce, but it's too complicated. Tomato, orange jam, shishito peppers, a little mango. So that's a nice description to sell. Again, then look at this. These, are, this looks pretty good. Look Beautiful. at the moisture. Beautiful. Oh, I got it. Oh. And you know, like the mango is an afterthought, but it, it, it makes the plate come alive. Because our sauce is brown. brown right? Our pretzels are brown. You know? Normally if you did a red sauce or a green sauce, you'd have a little more depending on the season. We always keep the crab cake the same. We change the garnish. Looks great. Can't wait to try it. Let's go, get it. There's a fork and knife underneath. Alright. Okay. Let's, let's give it a shot. Give it a shot. So cut it? In whatever way you like to eat it. Alright. I'll just I don't want to ruin it. It's so pretty. All right, let's try this. Pull that. All right, I think I'm ready for the line, chef. It's really good. Sous chef? Yeah. Give it a shot. Yeah, I think you're ready. <laughs> You gotta go crabbing first. You gotta catch the crab. You gotta Let's do go. Apprenticeship like a TV I'm, show. I'm ready. I'm ready. Talked about Burke University. Then that's that. So next we can make a gazpacho, or we well, can garnish a gazpacho. Okay. Um, remember, we're coming into that season. You want to roll into that? All right, gazpacho. Ready? So here's what you got. Some t people thicken it with bread. It doesn't need any thickening. It's cold soup. Americans weren't used to cold soup. Now we love it, right? And you can add all kinds of. So you got a bowl. I got a bowl. All right. Now we get things to garnish with. Peppers, cucumbers, avocado. I have mango too. If you want to garnish with mango, now that you know what to do. It's the sword. Look at that. Love mango. Okay. Beautiful. And avocado. And I got here t t chopped up turmeric, cornflakes, and almonds. And we got crab meat. You can do, and you got crab salad, crab meat, salt, pepper. Go Let's to it. Salad. Now, I'll give you a couple ideas. Sometimes we do this. We take the sliced cuke and, and make a little border. You can do that. Uh -huh. You can just do it all the way around, or you can do it halfway. It's up to you. Just some there. Uh -huh. uh, you can just put it in this in a circle. I'm going to do some of them like this, right? I'm going to take some of these. This is my crab salad now. Remember we made those little meatballs? Yeah. I'm going to make croutons. Crab salad croutons. Roll them. Right in here. So get a little texture, all right? All right. Babies, put these off to the side. Want me to make your one or what? You got to make your own. Yeah, it's, you make yours, I'll make mine. All right, or well, you can make one big <laughs> crab cake and put it in, cold crab cake. I like that idea. And put it in your uh, in your soup. Right. But Good. I got to make three. You can't have two. Odd okay. numbers in food. Number Good. twos and fours, threes and fives. All right. All right. That way you... If there's four people, they gotta add, order an extra piece. There you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so I'm gonna put these in. Can you guys see that? What we're doing here? We're making a little bit of a garnish. He put a lot of cubes in his. I like the cucumbers. You like it. So this has actually turned out to be quite nice because. Hey, buddy. Chapo, you never, you always come at the perfect time. I tell you, shows up right when the crab breaks out. Yeah, baby. Right. So, here's the soup. I'll start. I'm going to put some, some, some gazpacho. I pour the soup in. That's about ounce and a half, two ounces. It's pretty, huh? Give me some more. There you go. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna take some of this, a little bit of this, a little bit of this, oh, get this. Chapo. He was on camera before he's okay. He's the sous chef. <laughs> he eats the, the the ones that we don't. He, the mistakes he eats. Right, Chap? Yep. Okay. <laughs> okay. Go ahead. You're next. All right. Let's do it. Use what you like. All right, so balsamic vinegar, a key component in uh, where sometimes worse this year. You want a little more acid. Now, now you pour that right on top. And lemon oil, just like last time. 
because you want elements, layers of flavor. So in every bite, you're going to get some citrus, some acid, some uh, sweet mango, avocado. Ready? Not bad. All right. Okay, judges. Look at that. Cheers. Salud. Salud. You know what's funny? Because in, in Scandinavia, they say skull instead of cheers. Yeah. You know why? Why? They used to drink out of skulls, which probably the size of this. It's a big head. <laughs> cheers. <laughs> this, is, uh, this is the gazpacho crab meat truffles. Avocado, mango, and uh, cornflake and almond crusted uh, crab croutons. Salud. I'll this pay looks you. It looks good. Looks all right. That's more salady. That's more as a main course because all the cucumbers and there's yeah. more appetizer. So there's va variations on the theme. And you could also put a larger amount of crab cake and it could be an appetizer as a crab parfait <laughs> with mango, avocado, and gazpacho vinaigrette. <laughs> Add sure. more vinegar and olive oil. Yeah. So we, we, various ways. This is delicious. Anyway, so crab, this is our lesson. Crab, this will be on the, on the green sometime in the summer. Yes, sir. Let's go. Shake it like you want to hurt it. Okay, today I designed a cocktail to make that will complement David's crab dishes that he did. So I wanted to make something that was light, herbaceous, a little citrusy, something that would go really well with crab if you use the actual ingredients. But we're making a cocktail instead of something to eat. So we're going to start with a shaker. Always empty. Never want to put your ice in first. Put your ice in first, it waters down your drink and everybody wants to get as much alcohol as they can in their cocktail. So I'm going to take my shaker and I've got my measuring tools, jigger, is God. Um, and we're going to do two ounces of Hendrix gin. Hendrix is a great gin to use. It's not too junipery. It's not too heavy on the herbs. It's more floral. It's got a little note of rose, some cucumber, which everybody knows goes delicious with crab. So we're going to do two ounces of Hendrix gin. And then as a modifier, we're not going to use sugar in this cocktail because nobody wants a sweet drink. I'm using a bergamot liqueur called Italicus. Bergamot is another kind of citrus. Super delicious, also great with seafood. We're going to do one ounce of that. Now, we're going to squeeze our citrus in. One lime is about one half of an ounce. So we're going to do one ounce of citrus. It's always nice to balance out your citrus and your sugars. Okay, here's for the super fun part. Get back your limes. So most people just think of herbs and cocktails as mint, but we're actually going to use more than just mint today. So we're going to use some nice fresh mint. I'm going to give it a slap because that releases the oils out of the mint. That between that and shaking up with the ice cubes, we're gonna get this drink to be really herby and wonderful. Then also we're gonna use some beautiful fresh cilantro. Smack that up, get all my aggressions out. And on top of that, a little sprig of basil. Get in there, basil. So. Once we have our herbs, our alcohol, um, and citrus in the shaker, now we can add the ice. I'm going to put in a lot of ice because I want it to really help break up the herbs and really chill the cocktail. Seal your shaker. Shake it like you want to hurt it. So you can see it got nice and frosty. I know it's ready to go. I'm going to use a martini glass today and I'm going to double strain. So I've got my strainer on the top and then I'm going to take my mesh strainer and strain that right into my martini glass. Get all the cocktail out. So as you can see, the herbs have given it a nice green glow. 
And to top it off, I'm gonna cover the entire cocktail with a citrus bubble. This is smoke, but it's not smoke like as if you were to burn wood or anything like that. It actually smells like all kinds of citrus and it's gonna complement the cocktail beautifully. And right before you drink it, the best part is you get to pop it. And that is how you make a devilish night. you trust it's almost time Mary what are, you, what are you doing here it's charter day it's charter day oh yeah get dressed we have to go okay What the heck? Where are the people? Where's the food? Where are my crab cakes? I know, everyone must have gone to the tent. Hey Rick, what's going on? Chef Jeff, I thought it was charter day. Where's the tent? Where are the people? Where are my crab cakes? Hey, Rick, it's virtual. You're late. You better get moving, I'm man. I'm late. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Charter Day Live 2021, broadcasting from the Dreyfus Theater on the Florham campus of Fairleigh Dickinson University. Please welcome your Master of Ceremonies for this evening's festivities, Senior Vice President of University Advancement, Mr. Richard Reese. Good evening, everyone. I'm Rick Reese, Senior Vice President of University Advancement. I'm happy to welcome you to Charter Day Live 2021, honoring our distinguished alumna, university trustee, and president and CEO of Consumer Reports, Marta Pilato, with special recognition of Pat Center, the outgoing chair of the Board of Trustees. We've put together a great program that I think you're really going to enjoy, but I wanna remind you that we're here for a reason, to raise money for student scholarships. FDU supporters have already demonstrated tremendous generosity. We are thrilled to announce that we have raised $550,000 to support FDU students as they pursue their dreams. Thank you, everyone, but we're not done. I'm happy to announce that in addition, a group of dedicated trustees and friends and other anonymous donors have provided a challenge grant of $300,000 for all new, do new donations made tonight. And toward that challenge, we have new commitments of more than $100,000 just in the last few hours. Our goal tonight is to top $1 million. We can do that because every dollar you give this evening becomes $2. If you have already given and can give again, please do so. And if you've not made a gift, please be as generous as possible because right now, the value of your gift is doubled. On your screen beneath this video, there is a link to make a gift. It couldn't be easier or more important. At this point, I would like to recognize some of our most generous sponsors tonight. Our presenting sponsors are Cheryl Beebe and Jim Grimm, Dan Lewis and Martina Lewis, Greg Olson, Betsy Ryan, Rob and Lisa Stewart, West Pharmaceuticals, 
and Patrick Zenner. Our, founder, our Founders Table sponsors are Gourmet Dining and Chip Wilkes. Our President's Table sponsors are Aspire, BD, TD Bank, and Wiley. Traditionally, before our Charter Day celebration kicks off, we host a ceremony during which we honor this year's Pinnacle Award winners. The Pinnacle Award, for those of you who may not know, is how the university recognizes the achievements of its most distinguished alumni. New inductees are chosen based on distinction in a field of endeavor, significant contributions to society and humanity through public or humanitarian service, and outstanding service to the university. An in-person ceremony to recognize this year's inductees will take place in the fall, but we also want to recognize them tonight. This year's inductees are Kate Booglin, corporate board officer, business person, and photographer. Elizabeth Catrini, who retired as chief financial officer of global customer services at AT&T and is now an assistant professor of accounting and business at Centenary College and a past president of the FDU Alumni Board of Governors. Frank Santalosi, who retired as a production director at the New York Times, and Thomas Timko, Vice President and Chief Accounting Officer at General Electric. Congratulations to all of this year's Pinnacle inductees. We look forward to celebrating with you in the fall. I know that we have a number of watch parties going on tonight, and we want to give a special shout out to you. We appreciate your commitment for the students of Fairleigh Dickinson University and your enthusiasm for our Charter Day traditions. We look forward to being together again sometime very soon. Let's say hello to our partners at Skank Price, Smith & King. Skank Price, Smith & King, a Morristown-based law firm, is proud to support FDU on this Charter Day celebration as we have in all prior years. Congratulations to this year's award winners. Go FDU. As a proud alumna of FDU, I'm happy to support uh, Charter Day with my fellow colleagues and look forward to doing it again in the future. Go FDU! We hope that you will enjoy the program that we've put together for you tonight. You'll be hearing from students, alumni, and the university leadership. You will also be treated to some impressive work being done by our talented students. Now, I'm happy to introduce Mary Trankman, the chair of the Charter Day Executive Dinner Committee. Mary is a loyal alumna of FDU, class of 1986, and a member of the Silverman College of Business Board of Advisors. Professionally, she put her business degree to good use. She is a CPA who spent many years at Big Four Accounting Powerhouse, KPMG, and is a former director of finance and operations for Scholastic Publishing. Thank you. As Rick mentioned, my name is Mary Trankman, and I am a proud 1986 graduate of FDU's Rutherford campus. As you may know, Rutherford was the original campus of the university. It was a wonderful place to study, socialize, live, or commute. And as an FDU student, I had the opportunity to attend Roxton College which gave us all an excellent international experience. With amazing professors and internship programs, FDU prepared us for lives in the real world, helping us understand the world, the people, the problems, and the opportunities. As a result, so many of us developed into strong, respected, and ethical leaders. Since 1990, Charter Day has raised more than $11 million towards scholarships for motivated students. The success is due to the goodwill and the generosity of alumni and friends of Fairleigh Dickinson University. This year, because we cannot be together under the Charter Day tent, we have created a one-of-a-kind event. It is, of course, a different event than the one that we're used to. But what is not different is the drive and the talent of FDU students. This year, more than ever, the university needs the support of all its friends and alumni 
to make sure that students can complete their degrees and pursue their professional dreams, just as I was able to. Please consider making a gift of any size. I hope you will join us in making this event a big success. Thank you to everyone for your generosity and support, and please stay safe and stay well. Thank you, Mary. One of the many unique features of FDU is that we are truly an international university. We have two campuses in New Jersey, as well as a campus in Great Britain and one in Vancouver, British Columbia. I'm happy to introduce Dr. Nicholas Baldwin, Dean of FDU's Roxton College. Hello, I'm Dr. Nicholas Baldwin, and I'm Dean and Director of Operations here at Roxton College of Fairleigh Dickinson University in Oxfordshire, England. Recently voted to be the overall top study abroad provider out of some 10,000 providers. I am grateful to have been given this opportunity to acknowledge and to thank Marta Toledo, our Charter Day honoree, for her commitment to Fairleigh Dickinson University and indeed to Roxton, where she was herself a student in the fall of 1979. I would also like to thank Pat Zenner, the outgoing chair of the Board of Trustees for his many years of dedicated service to the university. Thank you and enjoy Charter Day. Now I'm pleased to introduce Christopher Capuano, president of Fairleigh Dickinson University, who for the past five years has led the university through some of its proudest moments and over the past 15 months through some of its most difficult and challenging times. Good evening, everyone. As you know, this year, our Charter Day honoree is one of FDU's most accomplished alumni, Marta Tolado, president and CEO of Consumer Reports, I'll tell you a little bit more about Marta later on in this evening's program. At this time, I want to take a moment to recognize a very special person, someone who has demonstrated his regard for and commitment to Fairleigh Dickinson University for more than 25 years, the chair of Fairleigh Dickinson University's Board of Trustees, Patrick J. Zenner. In 1975, after receiving his undergraduate degree from Creighton University, Pat earned his MBA from FDU. And I know that what Pat learned at FDU had a lot to do with his extraordinary career. He started working for Hoffman LaRoche in 1969, right out of college. And he held a number of sales and marketing positions in the company, learning about the pharmaceutical industry from every angle imaginable. In 1993, Pat became President and Chief Executive Officer of Hoffman LaRoche North America, serving in that role for almost a decade before retiring in 2001, although in Pat's case, retirement was not the final milestone in what has been a truly remarkable career. Since leaving Roche, Pat has remained a leader in the pharmaceutical industry serving on and chairing several pharmaceutical and biotechnology company boards. In the 1990s, Pat returned to FDU and spoke at the FDU club. Soon thereafter, he was persuaded to serve on the steering committee of FDU's capital campaign, and along with fellow FDU alum Martin Stadler and Roche Pharmaceuticals, Pat made a generous gift to help construct a new academic building on the Florham campus which today is fondly referred to as the Zen Building. Pat joined FDU's Board of Trustees in 1995, and he became chair of the board in 2003. Pat has been a steadfast supporter of Fairleigh Dickinson University and is someone whose acumen and insight have helped the university to become more strategic 
in its focus. Moreover, his vision and leadership will continue to influence FDU's mission well beyond his tenure as a board member. In short, Pat has been generous with his time, talent, and resources, and among his final act as a board member, he has made a very generous gift to the university in establishing the Zenner Scholarship. For all that he has done for FDU and others, we acknowledge and recognize his service and commitment to the greater good. Yesterday, at its final meeting of the 2020-2021 academic year, the Board of Trustees recognized Pat's outstanding service as a board member and chair by bestowing on him the title Trustee Chair Emeritus, the first board chair in FDU's nearly 80-year history to be honored as Chair Emeritus. Pat, on behalf of the entire university community, it is my honor and privilege to thank you for all that you have done for FDU. Godspeed. Good evening, I'm Joe Kernan, co-host of Squawk Box on CNBC and a new member of the FDU family as parent of an incoming first year student this fall. Now that we're part of the FDU community, I wanted to take this opportunity to congratulate Marta Tolado, this year's Charter Day Award recipient. And I also wanna wish everyone a wonderful evening as we support such an important cause to raise funds for student scholarships so that every student can achieve their dream of an FDU education. Thank you, Chris. I'm happy to say that new donations are coming in online, including a number that are being directed to the Zenner Scholarship. We're gonna to jump to another watch party for a minute at the Trankman House. Hello from the Trankman Watch Party. We are proud to support Charter Day Live and help raise funds for FDU's most deserving students. Please join us, every donation counts. 100% of our donations go to scholarships. Congratulations to Marta, our honoree. We are almost at the goal of $1 million. Let's all help raise some much needed funds. Now I would like to introduce Dr. Wilfred Zerby, the campus executive leading our Vancouver campus. Hello, my name is Wilfred Zerby, FDU Vancouver campus executive, and I'm happy to extend greetings to everyone who's joined us tonight on behalf of the students, faculty, and staff of the newest of FDU's four campuses, Vancouver, British Columbia. Not only does the Vancouver campus expand the university's global footprint, it's a magnet for students from around the world. Students from more than 60 countries work toward degrees in Vancouver. I want to congratulate tonight's honoree, distinguished FU alumna Marta Tolado, President and CEO of Consumer Reports. Your achievements serve as a wonderful example for our students who aim for the summit of their chosen fields. I also want to salute departing Board of Trustees Chair Pat Zenner. Pat has helped to steer the university through a time of expansion, helped it to weather the challenges of the past year, and given it the tools that it will need to climb to even greater heights. Pat has also served as chair of the Fairleigh Dickinson University of British Columbia Foundation, ably steering the Vancouver campus to its current success. Tonight, we have a couple of very special alumni with us who would like to say a few words about the ways in which scholarship support has made an impact on their lives. As students, both were recipient of Charter Day scholarships and both have gone on to do wonderful things in their chosen fields. First up is Tremaine Cooper. Good evening, everyone. My name is Tremaine Cooper and I earned both my bachelor's and master's degrees in hospitality management from Fairleigh Dickinson University. I'm currently the Senior Director of Brand Performance Support at Hilton Worldwide, responsible for supporting all of the new hotels in the Americas that join one of our 18 family of brands. Tonight marks the second time that I have had the opportunity to speak at FDU's Charter Day. The first time was in 2007. I was 21 and a recipient of a Charter Day scholarship, and I was selected to be the student speaker that year. I remember how nerve wracking the experience was. There I was in a tuxedo, addressing the generous friends of FDU. 
My goal was to represent all of the recipients of scholarships at FDU and to make sure that those in attendance that night understood the incredible impact their generosity had and continues to have. It is the same goal that I have this evening. FDU's International School of Hospitality and Tourism Management is truly one of the jewels in the university's crown. My time at FDU submitted my career goals and the education that I received laid the foundation for the career that I have today. Every professor I worked with had and shared real world knowledge about the hospitality industry, the nuances of working in hotels and restaurants, and ways to provide guests with exceptional experiences. FDU equipped me with the tools to think creatively, even in tough situations. And while the pandemic has certainly changed the scope of how many businesses operate, the hospitality and tourism industry will continue to be a vital part of a healthy economy for just about every country. The business may change, but people will always want to travel for meetings and events, for vacation, or to visit family and friends. And when people travel, they will want to feel at home and cared for. For this reason, we will always need well-trained hospitality professionals. And take it from me, there is no better place to pursue professional studies and global hospitality leadership, pursue internships and other job opportunities, and network within the industry than right here at FDU. Because of the career that I was able to build on the bedrock of my FDU education, I'm very happy to be able to give back some small part of what was given to me. Last summer, I was delighted to be a guest speaker and moderate a panel discussion at FDU. I also had the pleasure of serving on the Board of Advisors for the School of Hospitality, and I am always an enthusiastic cheerleader for FDU students who are accepted into Hilton's internship programs. Charter Day 2007 was, for me, a step towards my goals. I was the first person in my immediate family to graduate from college, and for my father, who accompanied me that night, it was a wonderful occasion and a very proud moment for both of us. I was fortunate to take advantage of the networking opportunity during the dinner, connecting with the recruiter for Wyndham Hotels and Resorts. I was offered an internship at the corporate offices in Parsippany, which served as a launching pad for the career that I now have. So to all of the longtime supporters of FDU's Charter Day, I wanna simply say thank you. The help that you provide to the students of this wonderful institution has a ripple effect, changing an almost unknowable number of lives, now and in the future, for the better. Hey everyone, it's really great to be with everyone on Charter Day at Fairleigh Dickinson University. I'm Craig Newmark, and I'm proudly from uh, New Jersey. I grew up in Morristown in the 50s and 60s. Fairleigh Dickinson was a mysterious neighbor that I knew was important, but never really understood. Today, I wanna seriously congratulate Marta Tejado, Fairleigh Dickinson class of 81, for an ongoing lifetime of public interest service. I served as a board member of Consumer Reports for about 10 years, still involved, and I've been really, really pleased to see the transformation she has led from a legacy social enterprise to a serious player when it comes to uh, new technologies and how important they are to all of us. Consumer Reports is now ready and taking on the challenges that we all face in this new digital age, we have to deal with issues like privacy, security, and the rights associated with these digital technologies. With Consumer Reports Digital Lab, consumers will be better served and better protected in the future. They're doing really good work. I've seen it firsthand. Congratulations to my friend Marta, who's a true champion, a serious fighter on behalf of every single consumer. Thank you, Tremaine and Craig. Remember, 
When you support Charter Day with a scholarship gift, you make it possible for students to dream big. Please consider making a gift using the button below this video. Next, we have a real treat for you. Abby Lopez, who is majoring in theater arts with a concentration in musical theater, will perform for us. Abby just earned her bachelor's degree this year, and because she is part of the Quest program in elementary education, she will continue on at FDU in pursuit of her master's. Abby will be performing I'm Not Afraid of Anything from Songs from a New World. Abby is accompanied by Dr. Alan Cohn, professor of music at FDU, where he teaches, supervises the music program, and conducts the chorus, chamber choir, and band. Jenny's afraid of water. I mean, she swims so well, but still she's afraid of water. And so she won't go near the sea. Not me. And Katie's afraid of darkness. I mean, she sleeps and all, but still she's afraid of darkness. So when the lights go out, she has to hold my hand I don't understand I'm not afraid of anything be it mountains, waters, dragons, dark or sky I'm not afraid of anything tell me where's the challenge if you never try so watch me fly I'm not afraid and daddy's afraid of babies I mean he got through me but now he's afraid of babies guess he's scared of what they'll be not me Mama's afraid of crying. I mean, she tries to hold it in. She's afraid of crying. And she can look at me with tears stuck in her eyes. I don't know why. I'm not afraid of anything, be it growing old. give up what they want without a trial another mile I'm not afraid and I heard the calling of adventure and I hear the ringing in my ear the lights are glaring trumpets blaring I'm right here and I feel the calling of tomorrow and I feel the stirring in my afraid to hold me listen to the calling of excitement can you feel the pounding of my heart the lights are ready pulse is steady i can't stir never stop the calling of a challenge blessing on the water and the stones and david loves me he's afraid to tell me david loves me He's afraid to trust me. He's afraid to hold me. And he'll always be. He's afraid of me. And I'm not afraid of anyone. I'm sure to win with anyone. Let them come and watch them fall. Cause after all, 
Hi, my name is Riley and we are the FTU softball team. We can't think of a better role model than Marta Tolado and we look forward to being the type of alumni that make a difference in the world just like Marta. Go Knights! FTU's animation lab recently underwent a floor-to-ceiling renovation, which was made possible through the generosity of our friend and honorary alumna, Chris Dorfler. The new lab provides students with the ability to use the state-of-the-art technology that enables them to work with and master equipment that they will encounter in professional settings. Tonight, we have an excerpt from Still Life, the animation thesis project of Andy Remininski. Hi, I'm television's David Turner, and by television's, I mean I watch too much of it. Um, Marta, my great-grandfather was Fairleigh Dickinson, so you can see the seriousness of purpose has diffused through the generations. Um, I am sending this message on behalf of the Dickinson family to thank you for everything you've done for FDU and to congratulate you on this great honor. I'll tell you a little tidbit. My great-grandfather was nervous when Peter San Martino approached him about endowing the school and using his name, not because he didn't believe in it, but because he was allergic to the idea that it might look like he was trying to brag about something. And what made him take the plunge was the thought of being associated with people like you, which he knew would be an intergenerational honor for our family, and it is. So, thank you for everything you've done and congratulations on this great honor. Our hats off to you. The goal at the center of Charter Day, whether on the floor in campus, I can't believe my phone went off. Yeah, hello? Yeah, yeah it's, it's Charter Day. I'm, I'm live at Charter Day. What's up? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah. Oh, oh cool. Great. <laughs> Thanks. All right, bye. So I'm really sorry about that. 
That, that was Chris Dorfler, who uh, I mentioned earlier had uh, donated the funds for Animation Lab, and she was watching Charter Day and the animation, and, and she loved it. And uh, she wanted to let me know that in addition to her many contributions to the university, she's donating another $100,000 so that we can hit that $300,000 challenge tonight. So thank you, Chris. We, uh, we really love you. I'm going to start over now. <laughs> the goal at the center of Charter Day, whether on the Florham campus grounds or in the virtual realm, is to provide financial assistance to deserving students. One of those students is with us tonight. Like me, I think you will be impressed with C.J. Milano, who is the epitome of an FDU scholarship recipient. I think you will agree, too, that supporting students like C.J. with his boundless energy, enthusiasm, ambition, is as worthy a cause as there can be. Hi, everyone. I'm C.J. Milano, and I'm a member of the class of 2022. I am a student in FDU's International School of Hospitality, Sports, and Tourism Management, studying Hotel and Restaurant Management. I'd like to tell you a little bit about how I came to FDU. Because it's one of the most highly regarded programs in hospitality, it's not surprising that someone who is interested in working in the hospitality industry would want to come to FDU. However, for the longest time, I thought I wanted to be a chef. I loved cooking. I loved great food and wine. I went to a culinary arts magnet high school, and my dream school was the Culinary Institute of America. Every time I visited the school, ate in the restaurants there, I would get goosebumps. But during my senior year of high school, I had the opportunity to run a local restaurant, and it began to dawn on me that I didn't love being in the kitchen. What I really wanted was to be in the front of the house, making guests feel comfortable and well cared for. So I started to rethink my career goals. I began looking at universities with programs in hospitality management, and this time, the goosebumps came when I toured the FDU campus. My family has had its share of financial struggles, and my parents have always done what they had to do to keep a roof over our heads and food on our table. But that has come with a cost. They don't do what they love for a living which is why it's so important to me to spend my professional life in a field about which I am passionate. At FDU, I've had professors who have encouraged me, who've cared about me and are invested in my success. I've had internships that have given me insight into the areas of the hospitality industry where I might find my niche. And I've received scholarships that have made it all possible. I am the proud recipient of the Dennis McAdam Endowed Scholarship and the Shende Rotisserere Foundation Scholarship. Because I have been fortunate enough to receive scholarship support from the university, I am committed to making a positive contribution to campus life while I am a student here. To that end, I am the president of Devil's Care Pantry, a working food pantry located on campus that provides food and other essentials to students in need. It is our mission to provide a stigma-free environment where members of the campus community who are experiencing food insecurity can come and get assistance. I am proud to say that in 2019, the student body awarded our organization the best new organization of the year. As president, I am looking to take the pantry to new heights and making sure none of our campus community members ever go hungry. With the help of my team, I hope to extend the reach of the program to the Metro campus. The way I look at it is this. I have received help that has enabled me to attend FDU without incurring a mountain of debt. And that assistance has enabled me to help other members of our community by helping to establish and run the food pantry. So the gifts that generous donors like you make to student scholarships have both immediate and long-term effects. So I want to thank you for the significant impact that your generosity has had on my life but I also want you to know that your generosity has had a ripple effect as well. Gifts to support student scholarships certainly change the lives of students who receive those scholarships, but they can also benefit lives beyond what you can see. Thank you all very much. Good night. Seth Greenberg, Fairleigh Dickinson, class of 78, and I'm honored to ask to Give a short message on my experience at Fairleigh Dickinson, which was absolutely incredible, life-altering, quite honestly. Uh, 
you know, I think about the success that I've been fortunate to have uh, both in my coaching career and uh, my broadcasting career. And a lot has to do with the lessons I learned at Fairleigh Dickinson. Uh, Fairleigh Dickinson basically built a bridge for me to cross to pursue my career in both coaching and obviously in the media, although the media came a little earlier than I expected. Also, I'd like to uh, congratulate Martha and Pat on being honored and uh, just uh, thank you for your service for Fairleigh Dickinson. It's so important that we all give back and try to make a difference in, the, in our own communities and, and where we came from. Fairleigh Dickinson is a special place and I know these are really difficult times, but it's in times like this that uh, you really do appreciate the people that give of themselves. Uh, and uh, Pat and, Mar and Marta, thank you so much for making a difference. Uh, on campus uh, and in our community. So uh, have a great charter day and uh, I look forward to getting back on campus soon. Everyone be safe. And uh, again, thank you very much Fairly Dickinson for all you did for me, which enabled me to do for others. Thank you, CJ and Seth. Next, we will hear from another FDU alum who has risen to great heights in her chosen profession. Please welcome Kelly Kramer. My name is Kelly Kramer, and I am a proud alumna of Fairleigh Dickinson University, where I was a recipient of a Charter Day Scholarship. When I first arrived at FDU, I thought I wanted to work in public relations, but through a wonderful alchemy of guidance, skill, focus, ambition, connections, and a little luck, I set my sights on a career in broadcast journalism. The Charter Day Scholarship, along with the other scholarships that I was awarded at FDU, set me on this path. For more than 75 years, students have been coming to FDU and finding the thing that sparks their imaginations. For me, the magic of FDU was the connections that I made, both inside and outside of the classroom, as well as its proximity to New York City. I had three internships while I was a student, the first was at what was then Live with Regis and Kelly. There, I fell in love with the high wire immediacy of live television, and my PR dreams went out the window. The second internship was with Fox 29 in Philadelphia, the summer between my junior and senior year. Senior year, I interned at Inside Edition, but it was my summer at Fox 29 that helped me land my first real job, rolling teleprompter for the morning show there. Super glamorous. After several promotions, I ended up on the assignment desk. But what I really wanted to do was write and produce live TV news. Using some of the tenacity that I had honed at FDU, I began applying for produ producing jobs across the country. That's how this Jersey girl ended up in Green Bay, Wisconsin. I ran the morning show at the local NBC station. I learned a lot, and it goes without saying, I made a lot of mistakes. But when my contract was up, Fox 29 hired me back on as a producer. I spent three years there before the big leagues came calling. I started at Fox News as a writer on Fox and Friends. I worked for about 10 years on that show, working my way up to senior producer before moving to the digital side. I am now the deputy managing editor of foxnews.com and foxbusiness.com. So that's the Reader's Digest version of my career. What will come as absolutely no surprise to the alumni and friends of FDU is that the seeds for so much of what I've been able to accomplish were sown during my four years at the Metropolitan Campus. I was editor-in-chief of the student-run newspaper, The Equinox, and the paper's advisor, Jane Fodoraro, or more fondly known as Tinker, was both a mentor and a role model for me. Thursday nights were when we closed the paper, and we would often work until the wee hours. Although she was in her 70s, having already had a career as a working journalist, she was always there with us at 3 a.m., making sure that we held ourselves to the highest journalistic standards. I have enjoyed much success in my career, for which I am grateful and proud, but no one makes their way alone. A great university is defined by the way in which it identifies and nurtures the talent that each student brings, and that's what FDU did for me. We all have potential, and I was fortunate to find a university and mentors who saw mine and challenged me to grow, learn, and find my way in the world. I am happy to be able to share this small part of my story with you tonight. I am here representing the hundreds of students who you have assisted with your generous gifts, 
the students who have taken the encouragement, training, guidance, inspiration, instruction, and preparation into the world and created the best version of themselves. I am grateful and I am happy to represent all of the Charter Day scholars who have had their own success stories. We all have you to thank. Hi, my name is DJ Ganelli, member of the FDU baseball team. We're here at Vincent J. and Linda F. Namoli Ballpark. We want to say congratulations to Marta Tellado and a big thank you to everybody who sports athletics here at FDU. Go Devils! President Christopher Capuano will introduce the woman of the hour, tonight's honoree, Marta Tolado. But first, we have the pleasure of hearing from an old friend of Marta's, Senator Bill Bradley. I want to congratulate Marta Tolado on receipt of the Charter Day Award. I also want to congratulate Farley Dickinson for recognizing such an extraordinary talent. Marta was one of my best ever staff members in Washington, serving the people of New Jersey. She is a compassionate leader who's guided by a strong set of values and dedicated to excellence and inclusion. She is in fact, I think, uh, kind of the best of America. And now she's at the uh, Consumer Reports and she's looking out after all of our interests. So that's a good win for all of us. Congratulations, Marta, on this special honor. I don't know anyone who deserves it more. Hello again. I now have the pleasure of introducing the 2021 Charter Day honoree, Marta Tolado. Marta has said that coming to FDU was a little bit like being rescued. Marta was born in Havana, Cuba. Her family made their way to the U.S. as part of the mass exodus after the Cuban Revolution. She remembers being a little lost as a high school student, but says that she knew she wanted to go to college. Her brother, who was attending FDU, brought her to campus and introduced her to a guidance counselor, and she says the rest was history. While she may have been lost as a high school student, Marta certainly found a direction pretty quickly. After graduating from FDU in 1981, she went on to earn a master's degree and a PhD from Yale University. She began her career in consumer advocacy working with Ralph Nader, and then she became a senior advisor to Senator Bill Bradley. She held leadership roles at the Aspen Institute and the Ford Foundation before becoming president and CEO of Consumer Reports in 2014. At Consumer Reports, Marta leads America's foremost consumer organization, an independent nonprofit that works side by side with consumers to advance truth, transparency, and fairness in the marketplace. She is known as a transformational leader with a talent for innovation, a passion for public service, and a distinguished portfolio of accomplishments in mission-driven organizations. Marta has been responsible for transforming one of America's most trusted brands. Under her leadership, Consumer Reports has evolved from a subscription organization to a six million strong membership organization has pioneered the testing of products and apps for privacy and digital security, won the 2018 Webby People's Voice Award for Best Magazine Website, and launched its first ever TV shows on NBC and Telemundo, the first of which received a 2018 Parents' Choice Award. In 2018, Folio Magazine named Marta Tolato one of the year's top women in media, and Consumer Reports has consistently been recognized with awards for its journalism, editorial design, and more recently, its video content. Marta has always demonstrated a strong allegiance to FDU and is a member of the university's board of trustees. Moreover, she was a 2014 inductee into the university's Pinnacle Society, which, as many of you know, honors FDU's most prestigious alumni. We are very proud to call Marta Tolado an FDU alumna and very pleased to present her with the 2021 Charter Day Award. 
please join me in welcoming and congratulating Marta Tolado. Thank you, President Capuano, for that kind introduction. I want to share my gratitude to our tireless board chair, Pat Center, from whom I have learned so much from. Thank you for all you've done and continue to do for Fairleigh Dickinson. This recognition means a great deal to me. It's truly a privilege to serve alongside my fellow trustees, to give back to a university community that made such a difference in my life especially when I was a young woman actively in search of my future. My parents fled Cuba when I was two years old, getting on a plane with my three brothers and me to leave the country they loved in search for a better life for us. They never got over the heartbreak, but their mission to live in a free society has shaped my life. Our plane landed in Newark and that's where we made a home. New Jersey is a state rich with members of the first generation club. We are many, but still there are moments when that difference of who we are weighs on us as we try to find our way. Fairleigh Dickinson University helped me to find the power of that difference and fueled my own passion to make a difference. Higher education was without a doubt my bridge to a life of purpose. It paved the way for my opportunity, helping me to see what paths to advancement were possible. At FDU, I found a community of professors and staff who mentored me, guided me, and believed in me. Thank you for expecting so much from me. My college years were spent at the beautiful Madison campus at Roxton College in England and at the Washington DC internship that transformed me. My educational experiences provided the foundation for me to confidently architect a life of service fighting for what is fair and just. Early in my career, I worked in government alongside Senator Bill Bradley, representing the Garden State, who was more than a boss. He was in his principles and his steadfast dedication and inspiration. In global philanthropy, where I met innovative and courageous change makers in far corners of the world, creating a life of dignity for the most vulnerable among us. And now I find myself at the helm of the world's largest consumer rights organization, Consumer Reports. And I take it as a solemn responsibility to steward this iconic social enterprise to one position to drive trust and transparency to the quickly evolving digital marketplace. And I'm very grateful to have had another New Jersey native, Craig Newmark, as a partner in this effort, whose generosity has made so much possible for CR and for consumers through our new digital lab. I'm truly honored with this recognition that you're giving me, but today is about more than the realization of my own American dream. Charter Day is about making sure that dreams come to fruition for so many more. We know that talent is evenly distributed, but opportunity is not. It's about recognizing that many among us need that chance of opportunity. Scholarships make that happen. Your generosity makes that happen. Higher education must continue to be the bridge that so many walk across to live their dreams, to gain the confidence to seek one's path and enjoy the rewards of a curious mind in search of knowledge. Your support of our scholarships help FDU keep that bridge open and accessible. It's a way our FD community comes together every year to create opportunities for so many. Thank you for joining me on this day and for continuing to embrace the common humanity that joins us and celebrates our differences. Your support and the support of Charter Day sponsors ensures that FDU continues to be diverse, worldly, and relevant. That's what unites us. FDU was the stepping stone I was searching for. I'm humbled. And I'm so proud to be a part of this community. Thank you. Hi, I'm Hannah Bend, a member of the FDU Women's Lacrosse Team. We are here on the newly dedicated Elizabeth Ruth Hennessy Field to thank all donors who support FDU students day in and day out, and to congratulate FDU alumna and Charter Day honoree, Marta Tolado. We love FDU! Go Devils! Ladies and gentlemen, I hope that you have enjoyed this evening, that it's given you a taste of the work being done 
at FDU and that you were moved to make a gift to support student scholarships at the university. I'm thrilled to announce that we have met and exceeded our goal and for the first time ever at Charter Day have raised over $1 million. Thank you everyone so much and for all of the donors who made contributions over the last 55 minutes or so. One housekeeping note, for those of you who are joining us to celebrate Pat, please remember that you need to log off of this and then log back on to the, uh, the Zoom link that we had sent you earlier. So we have one last treat for you as we finish up tonight. During the most recent presidential inauguration, we were all reminded of the power that poetry has to focus our gaze on ideas large and small with language that is concise and lyrical. Tonight, we are proud to present Russ Carrick, a student in the university's MFA program, who will join us from his home in Columbia, South America, to read a poem composed just for this occasion. Russ is an award-winning poet and translator whose work has appeared in many prestigious literary journals. Please welcome Russ. Hi, my name is Russell Carrick, and I'm a student in the Masters of Fine Arts program in creative writing at Fairleigh Dickinson University. I'm a triple genre student. Uh, my first genre was uh, studying poetry, and then the second was in translation. And I'm currently working on my third genre in creative nonfiction. Um, I was commissioned to write a poem for this charter day uh, that's titled Gratitude. It begins with a cup of tea that warms my hands. Small choirs ring from the trees, telling us we've survived the night. Light again, burning through a keyhole, through the veins of a leaf, burning the jagged edges of what feels like a peak of grief. The bees are humming, their legs saddled with pollen. The lost acorns have grown into forests. It's when my son smacks his lips and calls to the horses, to the Creole chickens he feeds in the morning. When my father looks out the window and sees a cardinal on the oak's bare branch. It's a nudge towards hope, despite the greater darkness of our cosmos. It's knowing we are all fragments of light, the billions of animals created from fire. 